Good evening. I'm Mike Perry. I'm the Executive Director of the Army Heritage Center Foundation. And tonight's speaker is Dr. Pierre Asselin, Professor and Dwight E. Stanford Chair in American Foreign Relations at San Diego State University. Pierre holds a bachelor degree from Glendon College in Canada, a master's degree from the University of Toronto, and a PhD from the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Before moving to San Diego University and joining the history department, Aslan lived in Honolulu and taught at Kapiolani Community College, Chaminade University, and Hawaii Pacific University. His primary expertise is in the history of American foreign relations with a focus on East and Southeast Asia and their larger context in the Cold War. He is a leading authority on the Vietnam War, a subject matter that has fascinated him ever since he watched Sylvester Stallone in Rambo First Blood II when he was in high school. Aslan is particularly interested in the decision-making of the Vietnamese communist authorities in the period 1954 to 1975. He speaks Vietnamese and regularly travels to Vietnam for research. Aslan is the author of a number of works, but those that bear tonight's topic include A Bitter Peace, Washington, Hanoi, and the Making of the Paris Agreement, Hanoi's Road to, uh, Road to the Vietnam War, 1954 to 1965, and, the, uh, and a Vietnam's American War uh, History. He is also the co-author of the Cambridge History of the Vietnam War, Volume 3, Endings. He recently started work on his fourth book project, A History of the Global Vietnam War, casting the American War in Vietnam as an international political, social, and cultural phenomenon that irrevocably changed the world and served as a harbinger for myriad transnational causes today. I'd ask that you please hold your questions to the end unless it's something really urgent, and please use the question and answer icon to submit your questions. At this time, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, thanks, Mike. Thanks for, for, for the introduction and thanks for inviting me to do this. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a nice change from the, from, from, from the routine for one thing, but it's also a great honor to be speaking to, 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 to you guys on, 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 on this topic, which, which um, as, 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 as Mike mentioned, has fascinated me for, 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 for quite, quite some time now. Uh, I just, uh, uh, Brief. Um, let's see here. Okay, there we go. So, as Mike has suggested, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not French from France. I'm actually French Canadian from 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 Quebec City. Um, you know, with a name like mine, working on Vietnam, there's always an assumption that 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 my my great grandfather fought the Viet Minh at Dien Bien Phu, and and nothing could be further from 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 the truth. Um, as 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 Mike mentioned, Rambo is the reason I eventually got into this. Um, and and then and then and then I, I, I ended up going to Vietnam and 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 studying it more more or studying the war more more seriously. Uh, I put up the flag because I'm sure, as you all know, uh, today is 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 the, the 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 Quebec province national holiday. This is Saint Jean Baptiste Day uh, in 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 Quebec. Uh, so this is this is this is our Fourth of July for us French Canadians in in, in the province of of Quebec. Uh, it's a holiday named after the patron saint of French Canadians, uh, Saint John the the the, the Baptist. Uh, so so I don't get to celebrate with my family this year, uh, but here I am with you guys, and that's 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 as good as it can be, I guess, under the the, the circumstances. Uh, so um, as as you know from the description of 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 the talk provided by 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 Mike, uh, what I'm going to try to do today uh, is is um, look at some of the, 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 the main elements, the main factors, the main, the main forces, three in particular, uh, that, that, that allowed Hanoi to ultimately um, realize its, its, its objective in the Vietnam War. Uh, in other words, that allowed Hanoi to, to achieve victory uh, in, in in, in the Vietnam War, I'm going to get to that in a moment. But understand that 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 from, from the time the the, the so-called American War begins, um, um, Hanoi um, has a very clearly delineated goal, uh, and that goal is entirely fulfilled uh, in 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 19, 1975, 19, 1976. So so, but th there are certain elements here that were kind of central in allowing this to happen. I'm going to address them today, and 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 what. I, and I really want to stress what I'm going to do here is not is not is not explain why the U.S. lost. Uh, that's been done a lot, and there have been really really great works on it. 
but 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 I really want to focus on how Hanoi won, because because I mean yeah, the, 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 certainly on the American side, certain things could have been done better, but but it's really important to recognize that on on the Vietnamese side, specifically on the Vietnamese communist side, some things were done very very well, uh, and 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 we we. I think we need to recognize uh, some things that 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 were in Hanoi's favor if we're really going to make sense of of why the Vietnam War turned out the way that it did for the different parties involved. Um, and 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 just so you know, so uh, I've been I've been uh, researching mostly uh, North Vietnamese uh, Vietnamese communist strategic thinking. Uh, uh, and I've been I've been doing that on the basis of of um, research in Vietnam itself, uh, including in 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 Vietnamese governmental archives. Party archives are still closed, but governmental archives are still open. And between what's in the archives, what gets published, uh, and then and then and then stuff I dug up in other archives, uh, including American, British, French archives, uh, and Algerian archives, I've been I've been I've been able to kind of piece together um, a, 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 a different history than, than, than the one we customarily do in, in, in the West. Um, again, I don't, I don't have all the answers. Um, uh, we're, we're, you know, as you can imagine, you know, Vietnam still closely guards its, 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 its archives. Uh, but but in, in 20 plus years of going to Vietnam to do research there, I've been able to get a good sense of what was happening in Hanoi. Uh, and what I'm going to do today is, is, is relate to you what, in my opinion, based on my research, uh, constituted some of the, again, the key, key elements that played in Hanoi's favor during, during the Vietnam War. Some of the stuff I'm going to be addressing today, I've addressed in my, in my, in my last book, sorry for the shameless plug, but Vietnam's American War. Uh, but, but there's also a couple of elements I've, I've, I've developed um, um, that I'll, I'll, I'll underscore um, that are not in the book, but I've developed for, 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 for this talk. Um, and so, so, uh, a key, you know, as, as I was as I was saying, right? Um, there's there's really three elements that I think are 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 among among many, but 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 three that are really really important um, when we try to understand how Hanoi won, how Hanoi prevailed in the end. Um, and and as as you guys who, who were in the military or are still in the military probably know, uh, leadership counts for a lot. Um, Counts for everything uh, uh, within certain organizations, such as um, um, the, the the U.S. services, and that, that was certainly the case uh, in, in in Vietnam as far as the other side was was concerned. And 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 to me, uh, it's impossible to understand the outcome of of the war without careful consideration of 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 the the individuals calling the shots in in in, in Hanoi. So. Uh, contrary to popular belief, by the time the U.S. war begins in 65, by the time the, the, the first Marines land in, in Da Nang and, and Johnson commences rolling thunder, the sustained bombing of, of, of northern Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh is, is, is no longer calling the shots in, in, in Hanoi. For the last year and a half to two years, uh, Ho Chi Minh uh, has, been, has been marginalized as have a lot of his, of his ideological allies. Uh, a hardliner, uh, a Stalin-like figure by the name of Lay Zwan uh, is, is, is really running the show in, in, in Hanoi. Uh, he's, he's, he's surrounded by um, acolytes, by, by, by other uh, party leaders who are like-minded. Um, and, and what's really interesting about them is that, is that whereas uh, the, the previous leadership, which had been controlled by Ho Chi Minh, consisted primarily, primarily of revolutionaries from central Vietnam, people like Ho Chi Minh, people like, like, like General Vong and Zap. The, the people in charge by the time the U.S. war begins are all from the south. Um, so so Lei Zuan is from the south, he's from Quan Chi province. Uh, and, then, and, then, and then other core leaders, including Nguyen Chi Tang, a general, uh, including Le De Tau, uh, in, 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 including Tham Hong, uh, are either from the south or have 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 spent much of their revolutionary career 
working in the South, fighting in, in the South. And, that, and, and that, that partially accounts for why they were so committed to what they call Southern liberation. Um, and so, 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 so keep this in mind, we, we have a leadership in Hanoi that consists of people who care a lot about the situation in the South uh, and who've already invested a lot personally uh, in, 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 in the pursuit of the, again, quote unquote, liberation of the South. And so, so, so that, that, that will explain their, their kind of dogged commitment to, 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 to defeating the Americans and then, and then, and then, and then, and then reunifying Vietnam under, under their own, their own ages. But this slaves one character is absolutely essential to make sense of pretty much everything that happens during the war. The Tet Offensive was his idea. Uh, the, 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 the refusal of Hanoi to negotiate until, until, until the late 60s, early 70s, that was him. Uh, uh, the, the decision to, to stall in 72 that prompted Nixon to launch the Christmas bombing uh, in, in December, that was Lay's one. Uh, he's an in incredibly important, important individual. Uh, he, he, uh, he's the one who personally engineered the sidelining of Ho Chi Minh and, and Ho Chi Minh's allies within the party uh, in late 1963 and, 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 and early 64. Uh, and he's, he's, he's as tough as they come. Um, he's, he's not as, you know, Ho Chi Minh had traveled the world. Ho Chi Minh spoke French, Russian, Chinese, Thai. Uh, uh, Lei Zuan had never really been anywhere. Um, um, uh, didn't speak any foreign languages. Um, was, was, was just a, 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 a very, very narrow-minded, uh, but extremely driven, highly ideological and committed individual. Um, and 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 um, he's 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 he spent time in French jails. Was tortured uh, during during the the, the, the French period. Uh, was released after the Japanese show up in World War II. Uh, as you probably know, the moment the Japanese leave, the French try to return. Uh, Lay's one is leading the the, the 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 fight against the French in southern Vietnam. I mean, I mean, this is a guy who 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 has bled metaphorically and, and literally for the communist revolution in Vietnam for, for decades, uh, which is very different from Ho Chi Minh, by the way, right? Ho Chi Minh spends 30 years in exile, right? Uh, you know, for, for, for while, while people like Lei Zuan are in Vietnam suffering, languishing in jail, Ho Chi Minh is overseas, presumably supporting the Vietnamese nationalist cause, uh, but in reality doing all kinds of other things, right? So, so there's a reason why Ho was always more accommodating than, than people like Lei Zuan. And that's the very reason why Lei Zuan decides to marginalize him, starting in 63, 64, as a consensus starts to build within the Communist Party to do more to achieve the liberation of the South, right? The so-called liberation of the South uh, by, by military means, if, if, if necessary. Uh, so under, under Lei Zuan, uh, under the, 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 the leadership uh, in, in Hanoi. And again, right, and that's the thing with Vietnam we need to understand. When we talk about the Vietnamese communist movement in the north or in the south in the form of the Viet Cong, we're talking about a, a movement that's, that's directed by and from Hanoi. So, so all major policy lines, all key decisions are made in Hanoi by, ha by, by, by Lei Zuan and other members of his Politburo which consisted of about 10 people or so. Uh, you know, the, the, the further you are from the center, the further you are from Hanoi, uh, uh, the more you have some leeway in terms of policy implementation. But as far as policy making, as far as decision making, it was always highly centralized. And it was always a, 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 a small clique of individuals under Lay's one's control who, who made those, 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 those decisions. And, and among the things those guys are obsessed with is orga organizational discipline. Uh, you, you know, the, the, there's always a sense that, oh, the Vietnamese were just peasants fighting the Americans, right? I mean, that is such a myth. Uh, from, from, from long before the Americans show up in Vietnam, we have a party in Vietnam and we have a military in Vietnam that's incredibly disciplined. That's, that's highly vigilant in, 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 in communist parlance. Uh, and, and as far as the army is concerned, uh, also extremely well trained and by 65, very, very well equipped. And that's, and again, that's to the credit of the leadership in Hanoi. 
they, they, they learned specifically during the war against France just how, mu just how important it is to, to always have unit, organizational cohesion, cohesiveness, unity, and ultimately discipline. Uh, and it's, it's something that they constantly emphasize to subordinates in the party, in the government, in the armed forces, long before, again, Americans show up in, in Vietnam, or at least the American, the American war starts in, 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 in 65. Uh, one of the things that, we, that will really, really help that leadership, uh, but again, that's, that's, that's something to their credit because they did it, uh, is that they, they, they exercise absolute control over information and the war narrative. Right. So, so, you know, the U.S. being a democracy, uh, hard as, you know, tried, uh, hard as American policymakers tried to control the narrative of the war, uh, you, they, they couldn't. You can't do that in a democracy, right? But in a totalitarian state like northern Vietnam, you certainly could do that, and they did. And, and just to give you an idea, right, so, so if you're a North Vietnamese soldier being deployed to South Vietnam, you're not allowed to tell your own family where you're going. You're not allowed to tell them you're going to the South. You can only tell them that you're going on a special and important mission and, and essentially to, to, to suggest to your family that you're being sent overseas so they don't have to worry about you. So, so as, 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 as you probably know, right, North Vietnamese soldiers are not deploying for six months or 12 months or 13 months as American soldiers or Marines work. They're there for the duration, right? They, they, un unless, unless they get killed, they get maimed, or they're recalled to, to the North for some reason, they're there for the duration. And so, so, so they're not allowed to, to, to tell their families they're going to the South, and then, and then they're not allowed to write home to share news of how they're doing, of how their units are doing in the South. So, so in the sense, in the North, no one has a sense of what is actually going on in the South. And the fact that these guys, these soldiers are dying by the hundreds, if not the thousands every week, goes unreported and unknown in Hanoi. Because, because of course, as you can imagine, Hanoi spins this, this a complete, completely different narrative, right? That, 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 that hundreds and thousands of Americans are dying each week, whereas our losses are minimal. So, and, and so that's one of the reasons why, why the North, the Northern population was always behind, if you will, its own, its own authorities. On the one hand, you didn't have a choice. On the other, it was impossible to know in Northern Vietnam what was happening in the South. Because, because, because the troops themselves could say nothing about what they were doing and, and couldn't even apprise their families of the fact that they were in the South. And so, so all the information coming about what's going on in the South is coming from government news outlets. So, so, so there's, there's, there's complete, absolute control of, of, of information of the war narrative. This is a really good one also. A lot of us who teach about Vietnam will always argue that, well, you know, the Vietnamese have a long history of resisting from aggressors and, and you know, they, they, they beat the Mongols, they beat the Chinese, and of course they were going to beat the French and the Americans. That's a myth. This, 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 this myth of, of, of Vietnamese resistance in the face of foreign aggression, this idea that Vietnamese nationalism somehow coalesced earlier in Vietnam than elsewhere, that was actually fabricated by communists during the war against France to facilitate popular mobilization. You know, the, 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 the Vietnamese were fighting each other as often as they were fighting foreign aggressors, right? So, 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 so th th this idea that, that, oh, they have a long history of coming together to fight foreign aggressors. I mean, I mean even, even when they're independent, Vietnamese peasants are always rebelling against their own governments. So, so, so it, 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 it's a myth. But what's interesting is that that myth was created by the communists themselves. Again, during the war against France, they recycle it and perfect it during the war against the U.S. And it's so damn convincing that to this day, even in a country like the U.S., this is how we teach the war. And this is what, how we account for the outcome of, 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 of the war. But again, like, look, look more closely at what's happening in Vietnam in times of non-aggression from outside. And, and, and it's civil war. I mean, I mean there's, there's so many civil wars in Vietnamese history. And they always happen whenever foreigners aren't there. But, but that, was, that was part of the, the genius of, of Hanoi's leaders. They basically, they harness history to meet their own, their own purposes, as, as governments tend to do in war, but as totalitarian government will invariably do for the purposes of meeting their, 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 their objective. And as they're doing all of this, 
uh, they're they're consolidating the, a, a police state. Uh, so so one of the reasons why why we never hear opposition to the war in northern Vietnam is on the one hand because 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 Hanoi controls the narrative. On the other, because because the moment somebody says something, they get reported and they get reprimanded, usually thrown in jail or 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 else uh, 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 reprimanded in, in some other fashion. So 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 there's there, there's there's no toleration of dissent whatsoever, and 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 Hanoi uh, and and the, the archives show this right. They 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 they're obsessed with 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 what they call counter revolutionaries. Uh, in in northern Vietnam, and and they're constantly trying to neutralize these guys, and through various public security outfits, do a really really good job of doing of doing of doing just that. Uh, and and this is another element also that 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 I, I think goes to the heart of why of why Hanoi prevails in in the war against the U.S. Unlike unlike American policymakers. Lay's one and other North Vietnamese decision makers always had a really, really clear sense of what their ultimate goal was. It was national reunification under communist ages, under communist governance. And, 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 and unlike the Americans, again, they were willing to bear any burden literally to achieve that goal. We know, right? That that as much as 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 as, as some Americans love that 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 Kennedy speech, that that you know this idea of bearing any burden. Clearly, the U.S. wasn't prepared to do that in places like like Vietnam. But when 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 you look at at, at the North Vietnamese leadership, I, I would argue that that they 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 bore any burden. Uh, if, if you know anything about casualties, and I'm going to get to that in a moment. I mean, it's it's stunning. And yet they just kept going and going and going because people like Lays One were were so damn committed to realizing victory as they had defined it even before uh, American troops are 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 deployed. And 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 and, and that's the thing that they could do that Americans could not do. They they Lays One and 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 other members of his inner circle basically were able to just disregard the massive death and suffering endured by their own compatriots. I mean, it's, 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 they, you know, they knew what was happening in Southern Vietnam. They knew that, 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 that 40,000 communist troops died in that offensive. They knew that 45,000 communist troops died in the Easter offensive, and yet they kept pushing. And so, 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 you know, on, Yes, it, it's callous disregard for human life, uh, not by the Vietnamese themselves, right? Because I mean, soldiers are—they just want to go home. They're just like Americans, right? It's but but by the leadership, the, the, the leaders clearly had no qualms about paying a really heavy price to meet to meet their 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 core objectives, and 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 they paid a terrible price. Well, the the, the Vietnamese people paid a terrible price so that these guys could ultimately have what 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 they wanted and so so you know as if you've been to vietnam you'll know that that you know the only people who really celebrate april 30th in vietnam as much as you see flags all over the place uh are 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 are, are party leaders for most vietnamese it's it's april 30th just it's just reminiscent of death and suffering of of wherever you're from north or south uh but but again right i mean if, if war is, is 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 politics this war was waged to reach a political goal, and 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 they, 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 a very heavy price was paid, but in the end, the goal was 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 reached. And and you know, again, I don't want to get into why the U.S. lost, but I, I really I, I do want to mention this. You know, Johnson, Nixon, uh, they have no idea who Lays One is. Uh, if, if you look at at, at at American documents, his name barely shows up. Even after Ho Chi Minh dies, and you know, so so Americans then and, and Americans to this day still think that Ho Chi Minh and Vong and Zap were were running the show, right? And and they weren't. They, they they at times they weren't even in Vietnam, right? So, but but what's really really stunning is that is that American policymakers themselves, when when we look at at, at the information they had, had no idea even after '69 who Lay's one was. They thought Phan Van Dong might have been running the things in Vietnam. 
but 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 they never tried to to to, to understand uh, who who was really running the show. And and I mean and and when you talk about failures on the American side, uh, to me that's that's a glaring one. I mean, imagine trying to fight Nazi Germany without knowing who Adolf Hitler is. But that's basically what happened here, right? And and again, if if, if you want to make it quick and easy, access the office of the historian at the State Department open the Vietnam volumes for Johnson Nixon and just do a word search for Les One. And you'll see, I, I, think, I think during the Johnson period, Les One's name appears in, in I think like three or four times in, in, in four or five volumes. I mean, they have no idea what's going on in Hanoi, what kind of leadership they're up against. And ultimately, these are the guys you're trying to convince to, 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 to change their, their, their strategy and change their goals. Right. So, so the U.S. ran the great studies of the motivations of, of North Vietnamese and Viet Cong soldiers, but but just like American soldiers and Marines and airmen and 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 and, and sailors, they're not the ones making policy, right? They're following orders. They're not they're not creating the orders, right? And and and, and in, in this case, it would have been incredibly valuable for the Americans, specifically American policymakers, to know more about the guys calling the shots, and and they, and there was just a terrible failure on on that end. And, 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 and this is, again, to Hanoi's credit, right, going back to why Hanoi wins. Hanoi always had eyes and ears when it mattered, and Washington did not. When you look at spies, for example, Hanoi, the communists have spies at the highest level of the South Vietnamese government. And, 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 and since the war has ended, Hanoi basically, through those spies, would maintain that we effectively had eyes and ears in the war room at, at the White House. And, and there's nothing close to that on the American side. Uh, 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 there, there, there were no American spies in, in high places in, in Hanoi, in part because Hanoi was, was, was paranoid and Hanoi was relentlessly pursuing anyone with, 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 with uh, even perceived so-called reactionary inclinations. So, so, so you know, when, when, when we, it's really important to understand that, 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 that the U.S., you know, Johnson and Nixon are, are facing counterparts who are incredibly shrewd, incredibly resourceful, um, incredibly committed, um, and, I mean, and ultimately, I would argue, uh, uh, who, who really know what they're doing, uh, uh, arguably more than, 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 than Johnson and his team and Nixon and, 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 and his team. Uh, but, but to me, the, the leadership we have in, 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 in Hanoi uh, between 65 and 75 is, is one of the, the, the core reasons why Hanoi wins its war against, against, against the U.S. Uh, so so uh, here's, uh, so most, most of the images you'll see, by the way, on my slides, are from the Vietnamese archives. That's partially why you may have never seen these photos. Actually, I had a photo of McCain uh, on, my, on, my, on my first slide. Um, I can come back to it later. But I got that photo from the Vietnamese archives. It was one of the first photos taken after McCain got shot down in, 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 in 67. I actually sent it to, to his office um, uh, while, while after I got the photo and while he was still, the senator was still, was still alive. But uh, this, I, this is a, a great photo. This is Lay's one. Uh, with with Mao uh, in Beijing discussing the war, right? So as I was saying, Lei never goes anywhere, but he goes to Beijing. Um, I don't know how closely you can see, but they're actually holding hands, right? They're 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 they're, they're comrades, they're 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 they're, they're brothers, um, and and um, this is this is this is the guy calling the shots, right? So so this is Lei Zuan with Mao, and and these were the substantive discussions. This is what Ho Chi Minh. So so that's the thing, right? He, as I was saying, Liz One will marginalize Ho Chi Minh, but, but Ho Chi Minh still plays a role, and there you have it, right? It's Ho Chi Minh remains the face of the revolution, right? The world knows Ho Chi Minh is this nice old guy, he's affable, he speaks foreign languages, uh, you know, he, 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 even in the West, people love Ho Chi Minh, right? So, so, so Liz One isn't dumb. So, so, so as much as he hates Ho Chi Minh and everything he stands for, he keeps him around for this exact purpose you see here, right? Photo ops, they're all smiling. Uh, Vung and Zap is there in his, in, his, in, his, in his uniform. And that's really kind of the, the, the role that Ho plays 
and 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 it works. I mean, like like I said, you know, they, they were they, they duped people at the time, and they still do that now. So many people still assume Ho Chi Minh was in charge in, in Vietnam it, to, at, at, at the time of the American War. To me, that's that's just stunning, right? And 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 at a minimum, we know Ho Chi Minh dies in '69. So so who the hell was running the show after Ho Chi Minh died? We never asked ourselves those questions, right? So so so. Um, uh, there's another, th th again, this is what Ho Chi Minh does, right? So, so go out there and, 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 and just create good PR, uh, you know, raise the morale of, of, of the troops. Uh, these are, uh, this is the, the, the North Vietnamese uh, air defense forces. Uh, we'll take a few photos. The world, our own people in the world will assume that you're running the show and they like you already. So it's all going to be good. And, 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 and I mean, it worked. And that's the thing with Ho Chi Minh, right? He's got, he, he, he doesn't look scary. Uh, Lays one does. There's something about Lays one when you look carefully. I mean, he's, he's one of those highly dogmatic, one of those very, very taciturn communist leaders. Ho Chi Minh was never that. And, and, and there was always a very favorable opinion of Ho Chi Minh uh, to the point where people actually question whether Ho Chi Minh was a communist or not, right? Again, we, we still debate to this day, oh, he was more of a nationalist than a communist. I mean, that's preposterous. It's absolutely preposterous. Ho Chi Minh was a communist through and through. He spent his whole life, uh, at least starting in, 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 in much of his adult life, committed to communism. He was an agent of the common turn. I mean, it's, it's anyone who says that he's a nationalist first and a communist second is, is, just, is just avoiding the facts as we, as we understand them. Um, at any rate, so that's, 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 that, that's kind of what's happening leadership-wise. And it's the same thing with, with General Jap, right? The, 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 the famous general at Dien Bien Phu. Lays one absolutely hated Ziap, and 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 he's going to be sidelined along uh, around the same time that that Ho Chi Minh is sidelined. So 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 Ziap has nothing to do with the running of the war uh, during during after sixty five during during the American um, um, uh, involvement there. This is the second element that I want to address, which 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 we've completely neglected experience. Uh, you know, when you look at the leadership, uh, the, 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 the political civilian leadership in Northern Vietnam and, and, and the, mili the military leadership, these, as I suggested earlier, with respect to Lays One, but, but, but it applies to countless others, these are battle-hardened, seasoned revolutionaries. These are guys who were tortured. These are guys who spent time in jail. Uh, these are guys who, who, who fought uh, the French for, for, for the better part of eight years. Most of them fought France uh, for eight years unless they were thrown in, in, in jail at, at some point. And as you can imagine, right? Fighting the French for eight years, you gain very, very valuable experience fighting in a place like, 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 like Vietnam. Now, this is, this is also another important element. You know, it's, it's uh, people will say, oh, the Vietnamese, they studied Sun Tzu, and their own ancient history. They, they never did that. There, there's, there's not a single, I've, I've never, I, I don't think I've ever come across a reference to Sun Tzu in, in the documentation. They, they, you know, Sun Tzu means nothing to these guys. These guys are communists, right? So, so, so the, the, the people that they emulate, the people they study, first of all, their own recent history, right? They go back and they study their own war against France. Then they study the Russian Revolution, they study the Chinese Communist Party in, in the Chinese Civil War, and they're really, really big fans of Algerians who fought the French between 54 and, 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 and 62. They, 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 so, so, so between their own war against the French, between the Algerians war against the French, the Chinese Civil War and the role of the CCP, and then the Russian Revolution of 1917, these guys feel that they have a lot here that they can use in the fight against against the U.S. Uh, I also found a, found a great document in the archives where, where, where Kim Il-sung in North Korea basically tells them everything he knows about the Americans based on North Korea's war against the U.S. between 50 and 53. Uh, it's a really, really interesting document that I'd be, I'd be happy to, sh to, 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 to share with you through, through, through Mike. And, 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 you know, and this is where, so most of the guys who fought France are not, are not really fighting the U.S., but they're, they're training 
the kids who then go and fight the Americans and their allies in, in, in the South. And, and, and the, the knowledge and the experiences they impart are absolutely invaluable. And, and, that, and, and, that, and that's the thing, right? It, 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 it's not, it's, they're not just training them in terms of, 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 of you know, how, how to shoot guns and how to set up an ambush. They also train them based on their own experiences on, on how to deal with dysentery when you don't have any medication along. How to, how, to, how to keep clean when you're out in the field. Because again, all of these guys went through a war against France pretty much in the exact same theater. Uh, how, how, how to find food, how to sustain yourself, uh, uh, what to do when you're dehydrated. So all of these little things are then passed from, from, the from, from, the, from the generation that fought the French to the generation that will be fighting the Americans. And that, and that proved absolutely invaluable. And so, and so, again, contrary to popular belief, uh, to me, uh, you know, when you look at, at North Vietnamese and, and, and so-called mainline Viet Cong soldiers from the South, those, those are as well-trained, as well-equipped, thanks to China and the Soviet Union, as well-disciplined and as resourceful as, as, as the best-trained American soldier or Marine may, may have been. But they've got this benefit of having trained with veterans of the French War who fought in the exact same theater under pretty much the exact same conditions against some of the same weaponry. Because bear in mind that, 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 that by the time the French war comes to an end, it's, 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 it's mostly the French fighting that war. But 80% but uh, of, of the equipment the French are using is American. So, 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 so there, there, there's a lot of experience here that, kind of, that, 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 that has been learned and that is applied when, when, when fighting the, the United States. This is another element that, that, that I think was really, really important in, in enhancing the combat effectiveness of, of, of North Vietnamese and Viet Cong troops. So, so, you know, yes, it's a totalitarian state, but, but, but it, it, in, some, in some respects, it can be extremely democratic. Uh, and, and, and communists, as some of you might know, uh, uh, this, this days back to the Russian Revolution, uh, have this practice, they call it criticism and self-criticism. Where, where once in a while, you know, we get together and, and, and I share with the members of my cell or, or, or my communist buddies what I've been doing wrong, what they've been doing wrong, and, and, and then we, we kind of, you know, built on this. Well, well whenever conditions permitted, after, 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 after an action, uh, uh, the unit, uh, whether it was, it was platoon, company, division, uh, would, would, would hold a criticism and self-criticism criticism session. And, and, and essentially, you know, so, 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 so you had enlisted personnel who could, who could basically say, okay, here's what I, what I did wrong, but here's what I think the commanding officer did wrong. You could actually do that. And these sessions would be mediated by, by a so-called political commissar. And, 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 and this was encouraged as a way to make sure that mistakes weren't repeated and that unit cohesion remained as tight as, as, as possible. So, so and, 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 and again, it's, it's something we never really read about, but it's something that, 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 that communist units, North Vietnamese and, and, and Viet Cong mainline would do quite, quite, quite regularly uh, with, with, with uh, uh, I would argue, uh, 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 to, to, to the benefit of their, of their combat effectiveness. And, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that commissar also, this is important. You have one, if you can spare one in every, in every unit, right down to, to, to the platoon level. Uh, but, they, 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 they don't just mediate those, 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 those sessions and they don't, they don't just indoctrinate. They, they kind of serve as father figures also within, 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 within the unit they're, they're, they're embedded in. They're, they're also kind of like, they double as chaplains, they can be psychologists. So, so, so the presence of the commissar, which traditionally is always thought of, oh, the guy nobody wants because he has to teach us about communism, was actually a very, very valuable thing as far as most uh, 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 communist uh, combat troops were, were concerned. Uh, he, he would serve as, as kind of, you know, a link between command, the, 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 the command structure and, 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 and the, rank, the rank and file troops. And again, this is something that was learned during, during the French War. Oh, the tunnels. So this is really interesting. So uh, if some of you have been to Vietnam, you've probably gone to Kuchi, right? And it's, it's, it's I mean, it's, 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 it's miles of tunnels 
dug right under an American base. Um, and, 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 the, and, and when we talk about the tunnels in Vietnam, we always talk about how, oh, the Vietnamese were amazing. They built this right against the Americans. And, and again, this is where experience comes in. That most of these tunnels uh, that, that, that are used to fight the Americans are decades old. Uh, basically how it starts is like this, right? So, so, so people, you know, villagers in their own homes um, uh, will, 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 will kind of build a bunker inside their homes, uh, starting after the, really when the French come in. Uh, in, in the early 19th, 20th century, right? So, so you build a bunker in your house, in your own house, and that kind of underground bunker, right? And then, and then just in case, you, you start connecting your bunker to your neighbor's house in case you, you need to escape, right? And then, and then over time, right, as years pass, so, so you know, the Japanese come in, then, then the French come back. The, the, that system of tunnels gets expanded, right? So, so, so we connect one house to another, then we connect two houses to five, then we connect all the houses in the village. And, and essentially by the time the US shows up, I mean, I mean, you have a tunnel network that extends well beyond the village, which has been developed, built over decades from the time that the French arrived to colonize on through World War II, the Japanese occupation, eight years of war against France, the 10 year hiatus between the time of the, the French leave and the Americans come in. And now, and now after 65, right? the gradual escalation by, by American forces. So, so again, right, you know, this like tunnel warfare, which, which in a way was very new to the Americans, right? The Australians kind of pioneered tunnel warfare as, as allies and then kind of teach them what they learned to, 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 to the Americans. But for the Vietnamese, there's a long history of using tunnels, of fighting in tunnels, of seeking refuge in tunnels, of cooking in tunnels that predates the American intervention by a really, really long time. So experience again needs should never be neglected. And 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 you know, as much as we talk about the war against France, I, I think that it's really important to recognize just how important Vietnam's own recent history was in preparing and conditioning Vietnamese communist political and military leaders for their war against against the U.S. I think we grossly underestimated just how much was learned and how valuable the knowledge was uh, 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 kind of, you know, garnered from, 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 from previous experience and specifically the war, the war against, against, against France. The, the, you know, the, the, and, 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 and I think that that's the difference here, right? We talk about the first Indochina war, the second Indochina war, right? The French war, the American war. Uh, in, 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 in Vietnam, this is a 30-year revolution. This is one long war, right? So, so, so you know, if you could really start with resistance to the French in the 30s, but then definitely starting with World War II, Japanese occupation. I mean, I mean, the Vietnamese are conditioning themselves for war, right? And then they fight the French for eight years. And then, and then there's a 10-year break, and then the Americans come in for, 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 for another 10 years. And, and so, so, you know, the, Viet the Vietnamese are building on, on previous knowledge, whereas, whereas for, for Americans, I mean, I mean it's, it, you know, it, it was a famous, it, you know, some scholars have argued this, right? Americans, you know, didn't fight in Vietnam for 10 years. They, they fought for one year, 10 times, right? If you consider tours of duty and things like that. And very often, you, you, you know, after a year, once you become seasoned, then, 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 then you're out and then somebody else comes in and they, they have to relearn everything from scratch. And so, so, so the, the, the continuity that, 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 that Vietnamese communist uh, leaders and, 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 and forces uh, uh, go through, um, it was challenging as you can imagine, right? It's a long time fighting, but, but ultimately paid, I would argue, extremely, extremely significant dividends. Uh, so, uh, you know, so this is, this is the Indian Fu, uh, the, 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 the Vietnamese learned very valuable lessons from 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 the the, the the war against France, including the Battle of of of, of Dien Bien Phu. Um, this is uh, uh, so you know you may have heard of the the, the 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 Ho Chi Minh. Well, if you talk about the Ho Chi Minh Trail, right, the famous Ho Chi Minh Trail. That trail was developed during the war against France, uh, and then there was another Ho Chi Minh Trail of the Sea, as they called it, that was also developed during the war against France. 
So, so you know, the coming up with the Ho Chi Minh Trail was just was just natural for the Vietnamese after Americans showed up, and they just reopened trails that they used previously in the war against against France, right? So, so, so these are 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 uh, uh, so-called popular laborers, as the Vietnamese would call, as communists would call them, delivering supplies to the front uh, by 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 small um, uh, vessel. Uh, so, so, so they do that in the war against France, and, and they do the same thing in the war against the United States, right? Especially in the Mekong River Delta. So, so, so you know, you you, you build on a wealth of experience here. Uh, you don't really have to improvise a whole lot because because pretty much everything that needs to be done to beat the Americans, you've done before uh, to 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 fight successfully the 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 French. Uh, so, you know, the, the war economy, if you call it that, right? So, so, so the war breaks out, and then, and then basically life in Vietnam moves underground, right? So this is from the Vietnamese archives. This is a school that's established underground as early as 1946, right? So, so you know, when the Americans show up, living underground is something the Vietnamese have done before. It's something they're used to. It's something that they're, 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 they're prepared for, if you will. And, and, and again, right, it, 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 it will play in their favor over, over the long run. Uh, I'm, I, I say a few words about strategy, because uh, this, this is also kind of, 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 of meaningful. Uh, again, consistent with, with the lessons they learned uh, during the war against, against, against the French, uh, uh, when, 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 when uh, the U.S. deploys its own forces starting in 65 and starts bombing northern Vietnam, Hanoi responds with, with a strategy based on, on what it called three modes of struggle. Three modes of struggle. Uh, basically, uh, uh, military struggle, which is basically uh, decimating U.S., but especially South Vietnamese uh, forces, right? So, so, so that, that's the military component. Political struggle, uh, what, what, what we call hearts and minds. And here it's basically... Uh, a, a communist effort to win civilian hearts and minds, to recruit uh, sympathizers, to recruit fighters, uh, and then, and then, and then, also important in, in in this political struggle is 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 what we call uh, or what the communists call uh, uh, enemy proselytization, uh, Digvan. Uh, now, uh, during the war against France, the the Vietnamese communists learn the merits of trying to undermine the morale of enemy forces from within. Um, and so, so um, at what point at Dien Bien Phu, uh, through, through that strategy, they get a whole company to abandon one of the outposts. And, and essentially, uh, in, in, in one day, uh, Viet Minh forces are able, able to seize an outpost without even firing a single shot. And, and that, 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 that made them appreciate the merits of, 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 I guess you would call it psychological warfare or information, misinformation, disinformation, specifically targeting the enemy and enemy forces. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, we always look at, at, at the inconsistency in the way that, 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 that the South Vietnamese army fought. And, and we always attribute that to, well, the South Vietnamese just weren't that reliable. We've grossly neglected the role that communist propaganda played in undermining the morale, the combat effectiveness of South Vietnamese forces. They, they always targeted those forces to those ends, and they learned to do that in the war against, against, against France. And that was part of the political struggle. And then the, 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 the last mode of struggle uh, was, was the so-called diplomatic struggle, uh, which entailed manipulating world opinion to secure external support political support, moral support, uh, military and, and, and material support, and then also to pressure U.S. policymakers to get the hell out of, of Vietnam. And, and, and this, I think this, this political struggle was waged masterfully by, 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 by Hanoi. Hanoi really did a number on the international community, right? Trying to, to present itself as, as, well, led by Ho Chi Minh, as, as not being communist, as wanting nothing but peace, you know, I know all, all of which were, 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 were lies, right? And, 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 and you know, this is, this is again, to, to the leadership's credit. From, from the very beginning, 
Les Juan and these other guys know that, that, that they're no match militarily for the U.S. or even for, 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 for the Arvin. And that's why they developed the strategy. They, they know that they can't, they can't, they can't put everything on, on military struggle. And, and, and this is lesson learned from, from the war against France. And, 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 and so, so, you know, they, 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 they fight when they can, but then, but then if it doesn't work out, then what they'll do is they'll rely on, on the other modes of struggle, right? So there's always, it's kind of a balancing act, right? You, you, you emphasize military struggle, if that goes well. It doesn't, then you switch to political or else to, 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 to diplomatic. And, and that's, you know, and basically, if, if, if one mode is falling short, then you kind of offset uh, that, 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 that failure by, by, by leaning more, more uh, uh, pressing a little harder on, 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 on the other fronts. And, and I would argue that basically this very fine calibration between the three modes of struggle made military setbacks suffered by communist forces, and there were a lot, there were a lot, ultimately inconsequential. You know, if you look at the Tet Offensive, right? I mean, I mean, American losses, the, 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 the first, the first Tet, right? The first, the first Tet campaign. We're looking at approximately three or 4,000 um, uh, US, US troops killed, right? Uh, by, by, uh, uh, on, on, the, on the North Vietnamese Viet Cong side, we're looking at 40,000 killed, right? Uh, the, the, the spring offensive in 72, 45,000 communist forces killed, right? And, 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 and as you, some of you guys who studied this probably know, uh, most firefights, uh, the, the, the communists are starting them, but the Americans and their allies are winning them. I mean, it's, it's in, I mean, body counts, right? I mean, Hanoi has admitted, by Hanoi's own admission, one million North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces are killed fighting the Americans. One million, right? So they lose a million people. And, 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 and on the American side, it's 58,000, right? I mean, tragic as, as the 50,000 is, relatively speaking, that's not a bad ratio, 58,000 to a million. And, and, and yet, how do you lose the war? Because Hanoi made the military struggle inconsequential. It was able to neutralize the relevance of the military struggle by, by, by pressing harder on the political front and on, 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 on the diplomatic front. Uh, so, so uh, you may have seen some of these images before. This is all well, ex except for 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 the the the, the, the photo of, of the uh, the little girl subjected to napalm. This is all stage, right? This is all propaganda. Uh, uh, but but if you look carefully, it's all women, right? Almost inevitably, you know, the, the communists put women as fighters. Uh, women didn't really fight in 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 the Vietnam War. Uh, they, they served uh, on the communist side, uh, but usually as, as, as doctors, nurses, support personnel. Uh, and yet, and yet, you know, when 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 you, when you look at the propaganda and you read some of our some 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 scholars, you would think that it was only women who fought. But it's because you know Hanoi wanted this image of of you know women, innocent women, fighting the big bad Americans, and and a lot of people bought it and still buy into into this 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 narrative. Uh, you know, the, 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 the napalm photo, right? I mean, Hanoi you know, had a field day with it. If you know anything about the, the, the story, it wasn't an American, it was a South Vietnamese uh, uh, a plane that dropped the napalm on, on the girl's village. Uh, but, but, but thanks to the spin Hanoi put on the photo uh, in, in, in popular memory, this is what the Americans did in Vietnam. Uh, but, but, you know, Hanoi would always do that, use certain iconic images and, and, and popularize them uh, to, to help it meet its purposes. And so, so, I mean, wartime propaganda, I mean, I mean Hanoi, I, I really think Hanoi did, did a much better job at, at trying to, to, to win over world opinion than, than American policymakers ever did. Uh, Hanoi recognized just how important world opinion could be, uh, including American opinion, by the way, could be. And, and, and from, from 65 on, made, made a, a concerted effort to influence how people in the West, including the U.S., looked at, at, at the war in, in, in Vietnam. Uh, if, so this is Nguyen Thi Binh. She was the Viet Cong negotiator in the Paris peace talks. 
um, I, I, I became friends with her handler. So, so she was in Paris negotiating for the Viet Cong and the Paris peace talks. Uh, and and uh, she actually had a handler who, who was from the North. And, and, and he, 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 he told me that he wrote all of her speeches. He told her what to do. She's, she's essentially uh, a, kind of a, a, a puppet, if you will, of, of the government in, 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 in Hanoi. But, but it, it was never perceived as such, right? She's seen as a woman, she's seen as, as Viet Cong, she's seen as independent, and, 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 and ultimately, uh, this, she, she answered directly to the leadership in Hanoi, who, who effectively used her because she kind of projected this image uh, uh, that, that, that helped to kind of counter the American, the official American, Amer American narrative that, that we're fighting bad communists in, in, in Vietnam. Uh, this is a poster commemorating the victory. Uh, and again, Ho Chi Minh in the background really had nothing to do with, with the victory. And then women, right? Women uh, uh, workers, women fighters, right? One as, as, as an AK-47. Um, it, it's, it's, it's that theme that we see all the time, which, which again, right, if, if, if you know anything about, about the communist side of things, it's just inconsistent with with reality. I'm not taking anything away from women's contribution to the war. Women made huge contributions to the communist war effort, but 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 not so much in combat as in as in as in other other areas. Uh, this is from one of the museums in Hanoi. Uh, we'd like to thank the communist parties and the working class of the countries in the world. I mean, Hanoi would eventually recognize just how important it was to get popular support uh, to to kind of isolate the Americans and force them out of of, of Vietnam. Um, and so the the the, the, the Central Committee of the Vietnamese Communist Party made that recognition as early as 76, more or less, publicly. Uh, and, and these are other readings. Uh, if, if you're interested in the North Vietnamese side of, 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 of things, uh, and uh, I'll, 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 I'll make my PowerPoint available uh, to, to Mike, and I'm, I'm happy to, to, to share it with, with, with um, um, anyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Pierre, you bring a, a, a degree of enthusiasm to your uh, uh, your lecture. Oh, thanks. Um, Thank you. Uh, one question that we got during the lecture is the documents you've used to to build your argument. How would an American scholar gain access? Uh, it's so it, it was. It, it took me. It took me quite quite some time. Um, uh, let me see. Let me just. Okay. Uh, it it was. Uh, so I, I first I first went to Vietnam to work in the archives in 1996, um, and and it was you know as as a young as a young scholar it was it was was rather rather difficult to get in, um, but but now it's much easier to get access to to to, to the archives. Uh, it, it you do need a letter of introduction uh, from from a university or someone in Vietnam just just to go to the archives and then and then and then conduct 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 research. But American researchers are welcome. They're 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 welcome. But the thing is, it's 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 not like researching other Western archives, right? You can't take photos of documents. You have to be very very patient. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the the materials are in the index. But when you ask for a file, then there's a party guy in the reading room who goes over the file before he hands it to you. And if and if there's anything classified in there, uh, you'll be denied access to to the file. Oof, okay. Any other questions from the audience? It's a quiet group tonight. <laughs> yeah, you answered most of the questions. Oh, here we go. Just writing it. I'm confused. <laughs> Dan, what, uh, do you have a question? Says it's going to take a little while to write. Um, Can you? Huh? You want to use the microphone, or I? I have not ever tried that before. Uh, let me. Um, so it, it's uh, it's Daniel. 
It's Daniel, yeah, there we go. How did the North Vietnamese see the hearts and minds efforts of the South? It's, it's, it's a really, really good question. So uh, the, the, the hearts and minds, the, the, the so-called, you know, uh, Americans would take a lot of flack for the so-called Phoenix program, this kind of targeted assassination program. Um, we now know from, from, from the communist side that it really, really hurt them. Uh, it, it, it really, the, the Phoenix uh, absolutely decimated uh, communist ranks in in the south between the Tet Offensive uh, and then and then kind of the the, the the Phoenix program that gets into high gear uh, shortly after after the long 68 period uh, the the, uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 communist apparatus in the south is 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 very very badly hit by that uh, as far as uh, uh, so th that was that we know that the as far as the, 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 the so-called courts, hearts and minds generally, most of it, um, Hanoi found a way to, to work around. Communist forces found a way to, to, to negate or, or, or to neutralize. Uh, now, uh, it's come to light recently that, that uh, uh, in, in, term, in terms of, of, of demoralization, uh, the South Koreans who were in, in Vietnam as allies of the United States, um, despite their, their relatively small numbers, there's about 30,000 of them at any given point, um, really, really uh, um, undermine communist morale. Um, you know, we, we, we often talk about, about My Lai, right, and, 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 and American forces committing massacres. Well, you know, everybody committed massacres. Uh, but but the, the, the South Koreans were notorious. I mean, the, you know, Mi Lai pales in comparison to what, what South Korean forces did in, in Vietnam. And, and we now know from, from, from the communist side that, that, that some North Vietnamese units um, uh, will, will try, to avoid, would, try to avoid engaging South Korean forces because they were absolutely terrified of them. And it, it got so bad that Hanoi uh, uh, created a special unit to, to fight the South Koreans. And then and North Korea, uh, that came out about two years ago, North Korea actually sent Psy war experts who were sent to the South uh, to deal specifically with, with the South Koreans. Uh, so the, the North Koreans may have been the only foreign forces uh, in, in South Vietnam during, during the Vietnam War fighting alongside communists. So, 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 so the, you know, generally speaking, the American hearts and minds effort uh, had some successes, uh, but, but it was ultimately bested by the communist hearts and mind effort. I hope, I hope that answers Daniel's question. We'll see. Um, Evo asked uh, a question. In your 2018 book and your talk tonight, you highlight the fact that Hanoi was obsessed with filtering any disturbing news that may have undermined morale. Do you think military morale was influenced by civilian morale on both sides? No, is it? Hold on. That civilian morale was influenced, military morale was influenced by civilian morale on both sides. Maybe it sounds like did, did civilian morale affect military morale or military morale affect civilian morale? It, okay, if I, if I understand the question, so, so, so because, because troops in the South have no way to communicate with relatives in the north. They 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 have no nobody knows what the other is going through. Uh, if I understand the question correctly, this actually plays in Hanoi's favor because what 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 Hanoi will tell its troops in the south is that you know their 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 sisters, their brothers, their mothers, their fathers are being bombed by the United States. So so if they fight hard now the U.S. will leave and the bombing will stop. So, so the, the, as part of the narrative Hanoi creates, the one that targets the, the, the soldiers is that, is that if, when, when you fight and, and kill Americans and, and, and their allies in the South, you're basically protecting your family up in the North. So that was a way to kind of um, um, a work around morale issues uh, among, among communist troops in in. In, in, in the South. Um, and as far as civilian morale in the North is, is concerned, of course, people worry a great deal 
about about their sons and daughters who 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 go off to to contribute to the war effort in in any in any capacity uh what 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 we do know is this is that um if you think about it right for for the people of the north um there there, there there's a war from 65 to 68 right as long as rolling thunder is going on people in the north are feeling the war and then and then there's no and then the bombing stops right so, so in late 68, Johnson unconditionally pretty much stops the bombing of the North. And then life goes back to normal in Northern Vietnam. When Nixon resumes the bombing in 72 with linebacker one, psychologically, this really, really hurts people up North because, because after, after four years of no bombing, there was a life had kind of gone back to normal. And, and there was an expectation among the people that this was over, the war was behind us now. We were still fighting in the South and our sons and daughters were still there. But at least up north we were done, and 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 the, the linebacker one, linebacker two, um, took a really really big toll psychologically on on northern morale. But again, right, demoralized as people were, there's not much they could do to articulate that demoralization because the government would 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 clam down on any form of dissent. Hopefully that answered your question. Then, um, what came from the Algerian archives that uh, that you used in your book? Uh, the what, what really stands out is the, uh, the, the, the diplomatic struggle. So, so when I was working in the Algerian archives, what I really wanted was, was to see the communications, the back and forth between, between, between uh, Algeria and North Vietnam during the war. And I wasn't able to see those files. Algeria is another place where, as you can imagine, it's not the easiest place to, 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 to see stuff. But what, was I, what, I, what I was able to, 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 to look at um, is is basically uh, some of the, the the core documents having to do with with Algeria's so-called Algeria had a diplomatic struggle during its war against the French, uh, and 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 it's really, you know, it's not. I, I don't I don't think it's coincidence. It can be, you know, you look at what the Algerians decide to do uh, diplomatically, and they say, okay, we need we need we need to document French war crimes. We need to have video of our troops just having fun out in the field. They, 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 they create a list of things that they should uh, disseminate, that they should show through their propaganda. And, 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 and we should have women uh, 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 figure prominently uh, in, 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 in our information campaigns. And, and, and essentially, when, when you look at what the Vietnamese do, in the war against the U.S., it's it's pretty much point by point what the Algerians did. So 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 to me, what 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 really kind of comes out of the Algerian fight is is the the primacy of of this so-called diplomatic struggle when you're fighting an enemy that's that that's so much better equipped than than than, than you are. And sure enough, the Algerians would try to mobilize. You know the third world behind them, the communist world, and even the Western world. And sure enough, the North Vietnamese will do the same thing, right? That's the thing; these guys are communists, right? So of course, the communist world will support them, but but then they also want the, the rest of the third world to support them, and they want they want they want you know students in France, in England, in the U.S. to support them. So so what they do is they create a narrative specific to each group they want to talk to, they want to engage. So when they're addressing the third world, for example, North Vietnamese diplomats don't present themselves as communists. They present themselves as people from a former colony now fighting for national liberation. That resonates in Algeria, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the Middle East. When they're talking to American students, for example, right? when they're talking to people in France, then, then, then it's usually through the Viet Cong, right? as a non-government actor, and it's, it's, and it's, again, it's often women, and it's all about, well, we just want peace, just like, you know, young people anywhere, our kids have to, you know, and so, 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 and I, and I think much of that they gain from the Algerian experience. Next question is from Jim. He said, can you speak to North Vietnam's part in the war in Cambodia and Laos? Ah, that's a great question. That's a really, really good question. So, so, and I, I, again, I, I think it underscores the, the, the genius, if you want to call it that, of North Vietnamese policymakers. When, when you really think about it, right? So when, when we look at the Vietnam War, there's a sense that the U.S. kind of, you know, expanded the war 
into Laos and into Cambodia, mostly through 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 bombing, right? And and a lot of, of, of critics of the war have argued that you know the, the, the U.S. violated the neutrality of Laos and Cambodia by by either bombing those countries or or supporting or staging military incursions into those countries. Well, you know the Americans don't start bombing for no reason. They're bombing because North Vietnam is bringing troops and supplies to the South via Laos and Cambodia. So, so, so you know, technically, it was North Vietnam that 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 spread the war to neutral Laos and to neutral Cambodia. But, but you know, because of the nature of their system and the way they went about doing it, they were able to kind of keep them under wraps. The way the Americans respond, you know, bombing from 30,000 feet in the air. I mean, at one point, you know, Cambodia, Nixon tried to keep the, the, the bombing of Cambodia secret. That stuff was going to come out. I mean, you can't, you can't, you can't bomb, you know, from 30,000 feet in the air and hope that no one will notice. And so, 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 you know, it, it, it you know, Nixon didn't bring the war to Cambodia. North Vietnam did that. But, but what, what Nixon does you know, is, is, is bring attention to the fact that there's a war in Cambodia. And that, and, and then, you know, Kent State, Jackson State happened. And then, and then, and then it, it kind of, you know, you know, it, it gets more problematic for, 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 for the Americans. But, you know, when, when you look at North Vietnamese thinking, the, the idea, you know, I, I talk about the goal of reunifying Vietnam under communist rule, but, but for them all along, it was a given that, that Vietnam would never be really free and communist and independent unless Laos and Cambodia were also liberated. So in the sense, Indochina was one theater for, for, for the Vietnamese communists. And, and you know, just like the Viet Minh were basically supporting revolutionaries in the war against France in Laos and Cambodia during the Vietnam War, the, the, the Vietnamese communists are similarly supporting the civil wars in Laos and Cambodia. So, 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 you know, it, it's really tragic what happened in Laos and Cambodia. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's so many people died, uh, even though technically, you know, th th there was no war there. Uh, but, but, you know, and, and a lot of that death is on, on American policymakers. But, but again, I, I want to stress, it's also on handling policymakers because, because they, they, I think, I think they did more than the U.S. to bring the war to, to those countries. Danny has another question. He says, I understand from the book Hanoi's War that the North Vietnamese leadership intentionally set aside domestic development to pursue the war. However, for the U.S. and the South, development was a key part of the war strategy for winning the population. Is there any evidence that the communists sought to co-opt the development efforts of the U.S. and South? So, 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 so that's, you know, as much as the Americans put a premium on, 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 on development of the Southern economy, um, and, and I mean, and some of the, some of the things on that front were done, were done, were done very well. Again, these guys are communists, right? So, so when, and, and we see exactly, I mean, and, and you know, the facts of history reveal, you know, the, the, the thinking of, of, of Liz one and other policymakers. So after 75, you know, the, the, after, after liberation of the South, right? Liberation, the, the first thing the communists do in the South is what they did in the North after 54. They, they, they basically, they, you know, they, 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 they nationalize industry, they, they collectivize agriculture, uh, and they try to basically undo uh, a lot of the good economic things that the Americans, the South Vietnamese, and their allies had done in, in, in the South. Uh, and, and, and that proves an absolute disaster. It's an absolute disaster. And, 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 and it took a while, but eventually uh, policymakers in Hanoi would realize that. And then, and this is what we're seeing today in Vietnam, right? It's basically the Vietnamese communists co-opting the same strategies and tactics that Americans use in the South uh, to, to develop the economy there. So, so, so th there was no, again, because of their commitment to communism, to Marxism-Leninism, there was never an effort to co-opt the American development plan. If anything, they had to undo it after 75. Um, and, and, but, you know, the, 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 this, 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 this communization of the northern economy had been a dismal failure, and then, and then, and then, and then the effort to communize the, the southern economy after '75 will be an even bigger failure, and that's that's why we see all these boat people try to leave. Uh, you know, economically things are actually worse in Vietnam after the war, even in the north, than they were during the war. 
We'll hit uh, maybe two more questions. We'll see how we, how we go on time because uh, um, this question comes from Ewan. I'm messing up his, his name. Uh, I would assume he is from Vietnam or, or was a Vietnamese abstract. He's asking if we were to use Hanoi's three modes of struggle as an analytical frame for the Americans, how would you assess the U.S. side? Did, did we focus too much on the first mode military? That's a really good question. That's a really, really good question. So, so this next book I'm working on, essentially, I'm, I'm, I, my main argument is that, is that the U.S. lost the war in Vietnam because it came really short on the diplomatic front. I mean, if you look at the military struggle, and, you know, I, I was talking about casualties earlier. I mean, the U.S. pretty much did everything right in Vietnam. I mean, what more could the U.S. have done? It killed a million by Hanoi's own account. It probably was more than that. It killed a million enemy forces. I mean, right? And, and, and still the U.S. lost the war. And that's the thing. Hanoi understood that, you know, based on its experience against the French, that, well, you know, wars are, they're, they're not just military struggles. They're political, domestically, and they're also diplomatic. And, and I think, and, and, and it's such a great question, Win. The, 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 the American failure to recognize that, that, that the whole world was closely watching that war and that, and that, and that's what the U.S. did diplomatically, that what the U.S. internationally could have a bigger impact on the war than whatever was done militarily, I, I think is really central to understanding, you know, why the war turned out the way it did. Seriously, if you just consider the military aspects the outcome of the Vietnam War makes no sense whatsoever. It just doesn't make any sense. How the hell do you win a war having lost every single battle, right? And, and on the American side, how the hell do you lose a war having won every single major battle and, and lost, at least relative to your enemy, only 58,000 people, right? Again, it's a lot of people, but relative to how many of the other guys lose, it's it's a very very small number. So 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 clearly, you know, emphasis on 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 military struggle is not a guarantee for success. And and I, and I think you know I'm, I'm not I'm not one to to kind of you know talk a lot about lessons learned right and 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 anal historical analogies because I think that those are really problematic. But 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 I, I think you know if if the American war in Vietnam should teach American policymakers one thing. Is that is that is that is that is that you know the application of force uh, could could conceivably be completely inconsequential, uh, and 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 all your successes on the military front could mean nothing, depending on on the way that particular conflict is 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 is, is being fought. You know, I, I understand, right? I mean, there, we, we we love our military, and and we're really really good at 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 fighting. But, but Vietnam has shown that, that the outcome of a war can be decided by means that are not military. And as much as I think Hanoi was great at the political struggle, I think that, that where they win, where they really outclass the Americans, where, where there's no contest basically, is on the diplomatic front. They, they get the whole world, including a segment of America's own people, on their side. I mean, that's, that's genius. And that's to, 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 to their credit. And, and, and you know, and, and, and if, if, you know, we're, we're going to look at this and, and we're going to try to kind of learn things from how to fight more effectively in, in, in future wars, I think recognizing that, 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 that military force alone can solve wars, uh, uh, can't, can't win wars, is, I, I think, really, really important. I, I, I think it's, that's a really, really great question. And I hope I answered it. Next, the last question, uh, and I'm going to rephrase a little bit because uh, Joe asked, how did the American intelligence uh, fail to identify La Duan? I would say, how did the North Vietnamese also conceal that he had uh, taken significant control? So, so, you know, I mean, one of the elements I didn't touch upon was, I, I should have, uh, secrecy. I mean, these, the, these guys are, you know, the, uh, the, the, the stuff that goes on within the party. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's a very, very secretive organization, right? It's a really, and again, it, it was only through cross-referencing that I was able to get a sense of what was happening in Hanoi. But it's very, you know, they, they, so, you know, the, the, their, their archives remain sealed and will remain sealed. And, and so, so, you know, it, 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 it would have been hard for the Americans to know anything just because of how, of how these guys operate, right? Um, but, but uh, you know, at the same time, maybe more could have been done to get, again, kind of get eyes and ears inside, inside the Politburo. Although, because of how paranoid they are, because of how vig vigilant they always are, you know, th these guys are always, always really well prepared. But, but th that's the thing about the Communist Party of Vietnam. It's an incredible, still to this day, it's an incredibly secretive organization. It's very, very secretive. And, you know, I would compare Hanoi at the time to Pyongyang today, right? If, if you've been following the news, anyone who claims to know what's happening in North Korea is full of it, right? And, it, and it, no one has any idea what's really happening in Pyongyang. And, and, and that's to the credit of the regime, right? Abhorrent as that regime might be, it's been incredibly good at controlling the flow of information into North Korea and out of North Korea. We're dealing with the same thing with respect to Hanoi at the time. Right, but but that's the thing, because of its history, right? Because of this history of being relentlessly pursued by the French, by you know, by by by, by, the, by the French security services during the colonial period, then by the Japanese camp then by the, by French by, 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 by French forces, the Vietnamese communists developed a way to always maintain secrecy, because because you know historically, if you couldn't keep your business secret, you would die. The French would find you and kill you. The Japanese would find you and kill you. So by 65, these guys know how to keep secrets. These guys know how to judge people, how to vet people. And so, so you know, they, it, it, you know, it would have been very difficult for the, as much as I was saying, you know, the U.S. just didn't, didn't have eyes and ears in Hanoi. Uh, I, th I think that's, that's less a failure on the part of the U.S. and more kind of a, a, a credit to, to, to the Vietnamese Communist Party, which because of the history had learned the importance of secrecy. I, I hope that answers the question. I hope so too. Last question, because um, we're going on an hour and a half almost. Um, you traveled into Vietnam. What is the relationship today between North and South Vietnam post reunification? I, it's a good way to end the, the conversation. If, you know, if, if, I mean, if you've been following the news, right, it, clearly, you know, the, the U.S. hasn't made peace with its own history, right, especially as it concerns the Civil War. Uh, it's, it's so much worse in Vietnam. Um, you know, uh, as I said, you know, there's a long history of civil war in Vietnam. And Vietnam as one country is a very, very new creation. Uh, and because the war was so costly, because the war was so deadly, there's still tremendous resentment between Northerners and Southerners. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, Vietnam is really three nations, right? The people of the North, the people of the center, and the people of the South. Uh, people of the North are very traditional. They see themselves as the real Vietnamese. Uh, it's, it's the seat of government, right? Uh, people of the center, well, they, they, they kind of just, you know, hang out. And then people in the South, uh, they're very cosmopolitan. They're very open, very friendly. Uh, they, they, you know, you, you can really see that this is where the French were were most heavily involved. This is where the Americans were, uh, and so, so. But, but that history, especially, you know, these years of Vietnamese on Vietnamese violence, because because that's the thing, right? As much as, as as Hanoi was going after American troops, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, the ultimate objective was to decimate the South Vietnamese army. So, so, you know, most fighting involved Vietnamese on Vietnamese violence. And, and because of that, a lot of people in the South still haven't forgiven the victors in the North. And families in the North haven't forgiven uh, their compatriots in the South, whom they see as still complicit in helping the Americans and, and kind of creating these very, very tragic circumstances that, that brought about the, the, the Vietnam War. So, so, you know, and there's all these statues of Ho Chi Minh in Southern Vietnam. And for many Southern, Viet like there's a big Ho Chi Minh statue in, in, in the heart of Saigon. And, and many South Vietnamese absolutely hate that statue. 
because it, it's like it's like rubbing it in our faces, right? Uh, the, the worst thing Hanoi could have done after '75 was rename Saigon Ho Chi Minh City. It, it, it's it's the absolute worst thing that Hanoi could have done, and it did it, and it, it created this bad blood. And so 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 you know, the, the 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 Vietnam War is still being fought in Vietnam itself, and and you know the the, the, the celebration of April 30th in Vietnam, as I said earlier. Um, they're, they're, they're good for only a handful of people. For most people, they're meaningless, if not, if not, if not pure, you know, pl plain abhorrent. Dr. Assel, I want to thank you for a, a very uh, interesting and entertaining uh, talk tonight.